Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, I thought as I mentioned previously that I would do a bit of a kind of well life update but mainly health update. Um, if you're new here I'm Donna, I'm a married, I live with my husband and I'm a mum of two boys aged 10 and 6, Archie and Henry and I'm living with secondary breast cancer or metastatic breast cancer, um, various other names for it, um, which basically when you get to that stage, it's not curable. They can treat it for, um, you know, hopefully a very long time. Sorry, I've got Duke here bringing me various toys. Um, so yeah um i thought i would kind of well i'll tell you the whole story basically from primary diagnosis from in 2018 um right through to my recent kind of not very good health news um obviously most of you come here for the usual kind of grocery shops and um meals of the week and family recipes and things like that so obviously if this isn't your kind of thing if it's a bit triggering for you if you've had cancer or you're going through it with a family member or whatever obviously you know i'll completely understand if you don't want to watch or if you're new here and you kind of clicked on because this is the sort of thing you're interested in um i do do some updates but i do lots of other things as well um, so yeah it comes to something when you need your diagnosis and stuff written down um, and I've got my cup of tea, so I'll try not to make it too long, but obviously grab a cuppa if you fancy, um, fancy one. So, I was originally diagnosed with breast cancer shortly after I was pregnant with Henry in 2018. I actually found a lump while I was pregnant, and to be honest, I ignored it for a while. I sort of thought, oh, you know, I'm pregnant, it's probably like, you know things change when you're pregnant, hormones, uh, maybe like a blocked milk duct or whatever, you know, you Google things and that's quite normal in pregnancy. So I ignored it for a while. And then after I had Henry, it didn't disappear. In fact, I think it got a bit bigger. So I went to the GP and um, saw my GP and she said, um, oh, I don't think it's anything to worry about. It's probably just fibrosis or because of pregnancy or whatever. We'll just like leave it and monitor it. So off I toddled. I thought, oh, great. It's what I thought it was. Left it for a few more months and it had sort of got bigger. Um, so I decided to go back to her and she was actually really good. She said, well, if it hasn't disappeared, you know, now it was a few months ago that, you know, you were pregnant, we'll send you to the breast clinic just to get checked out. But she still didn't think it would be anything to worry about. So I went off to, and they do an ultrasound first. So they did the ultrasound. Um, and I think they did a mammogram as well at the time. And, um, you can kind of gauge the vibe in the room and it didn't, seem like they were very sort of happy about what they could see on the ultrasound um, but they don't sort of tell you anything so they said oh you know the results will be ready we'll send you along to you know the breast clinic to get your results so I think it was about a week or so it wasn't very long um we got called in and obviously I got given the news that it was actually a grade three um breast cancer in my left side um, and then they did a biopsy and they found that it was um, estrogen positive receptor, which basically means it's fed by estrogen in your body, which makes sense because obviously I'd been pregnant and your hormones go wild when you're pregnant. Um, so they basically said that they'd have to basically the lump. Well, I don't know if it was the lump was too big or my boobs were too small, to be honest, but they said that they couldn't just do a lumpectomy. They'd have to do a mastectomy and reconstruction. So I had that done and I didn't need any lymph nodes removed or anything. They were confident they'd got everything, but they were like, I will give you six rounds of chemo just in case to get rid of any stray cells and whatever else in your body. So I did six cell, six rounds of chemo and I did the cold cap. So I kept my hair that very first time. Um, and then I, you know, I got, I finished the treatment or whatever. And I thought, oh, that's, you know, hunky dory, six months or whatever. And, you know, it's done and dusted. They said I'd have to go for six monthly infusions of like a bone medication, 
because um, having sort of estrogen blockers and whatever put me in like medical menopause and obviously I'm a lot younger, I was, th I was 30 at the time so I was a lot younger than menopausal age so they said oh six monthly you'll come and get this bone strengthener and I thought well that won't really interfere with much so that was all sort of done and dusted. Um, Archie went started school, I got a job in a nursery and um, Henry came along with me to the nursery and um, yeah, it was just getting on with life. Then we moved to Surrey, my husband got a job in London, so we moved here and um, I started doing my teacher training at the junior school that I work at and I got halfway through my training and it was, um, well, I think it started before, yeah, it started before Christmas. It was about October, November time. I remember I was in like a staff meeting and I was sort of really uncomfortable how I was sitting. I had like abdominal pain um, and then like I had shoulder, left shoulder pain, which I now know is referred pain. But um, at the time I just thought I'd like pulled something or it's where we'd been like sitting, listening to the training or whatever. Um, and I kept saying to all my colleagues, oh, I think I'm eating something that's like not agreeing with me. Um, so when I went to the G, my nurse to have the hormone injection that I was having to block the estrogen, I said to her, oh, do you know anything about like food allergies and whatnot? And she said, oh, a bit, what's the issue? So I explained to her and she said, oh, I'm not too sure. It could be like gluten or IBS or something. But she said, given your history, we better run some bloods. So luckily she did some bloods. She's lovely and and um she got the doctor to come in and check me over as well and obviously they said oh yeah we can feel that you've got a lot of like um swelling and blo bloating and stuff on this right hand side so they did the bloods and then the bloods came back and actually i can check my bloods like on my online account and as soon as i checked them i went into panic mode because all of my liver markers were like off the chart high like everything was in red like it was meant to be like 30 and it was like well in the hundreds and stuff so I knew something was wrong um but obviously it was very nearly Christmas by this time um so I emailed like the breast care nurse at the hospital and said you know could it be some medication that I'm on or what and she kind of said oh we don't really know we have to see you but this was like the 23rd of December so that Christmas really was spoiled because the whole time I was panicking, thinking, I think it's come back and it's in my liver and this and the other. And my husband, bless him, is always like a ray of positivity. And he was like thinking, oh, you know, maybe you've just been drinking a bit too much. Maybe it's IBS, maybe it's fatty liver disease. He was running through everything it could be except for cancer, bless him. And I'm a bit more of a, uh, well, I like to say realist. I won't say pessimist. I've been through quite a lot. So I'm just quite realistic in the situation. Um, and anyway, it came back that um they were pretty confident that it was um secondary breast cancer that had spread to my liver so they sent me again for a load of tests i had an ultrasound that showed that the yes they were confident it was cancer in fact there was a lot of it in my liver i think over half of it was like tumors um and so they did a liver biopsy which is possibly one of the worst things i've had done they obviously numb the area but you are awake for it and it is painful um, so I had that done and that came back and actually showed that it was it was cancer, um, but the cancer had actually been quite sneaky and not only was it estrogen fed, it was also now HER2 positive, which is a different kind of protein that it feeds on. So that's basically the way it had got around, even though I'd been on this all this hormone stuff, it had managed to worm its way around and find something else to feed on. And then they did a whole body scan and actually they found that it was in my liver, but it also spread to quite a few of my bones. So I've got cancer in my pelvis, my ribs, my spine, and I think there's a bit in my leg or somewhere else. Um, so um, basically it wasn't curable. So I was going to be on this um, chemo. So they started me on a chemo and they did a reduced dose because my liver was in such a bad way. Um, but unfortunately that was still too much really for my body to process and I ended up in hospital well first of all I was at home for a long time my mouth got all infected I couldn't eat or drink I stuck it out at home for a few days and then it got to the point where I wasn't even drinking so I was like getting like dizzy and delirious and really not well so um, my husband took me to A&E and they straight away um, 
pump me full of like antibiotics and fluids and everything else, painkillers. Um, and it turned out that I'd actually got like an infection of the mouth and throat, which they call mucositis or something. Um, and also um, sepsis. So I ended up staying in hospital for about 10 days. I had to be tube fed because I couldn't swallow anything. I stayed in for about 10 days um, and then they sent me home with a load of kind of like protein shakes and stuff that I could drink and lots of mouthwashes, painkillers or whatever else. And I, it took me a couple of weeks, but I sort of recovered at home. Um, I had done the cold cap for that one, but um, obviously because it was so much chemo for my body to tolerate, I did end up losing my hair on that occasion. Um, I'll put in some like pictures and stuff at the end from like my journey if anyone's interested. So yeah, they said that I was going to be on um, an injection to start with, which was like an immunotherapy. And that was quite easy. I used to toddle off to the hospital every three weeks, get this injection in my leg. It was quite a hefty injection. Um, and, and that would hopefully keep things at bay. So I was on that for about a year. And then I got the news that my cancer markers were going back up and the scan showed that there had been a progression again in my liver. So they moved me on to a different, um, it's kind of a half chemo, half immuno, which it um, was called Cadsila, if anybody knows anything about these drugs. Um, and I got about six or seven months out of that and then my markers started going up again. So that um, chemo is actually kind of not really used now. There is a newer, better one. So um, my oncologist did say if I was a few months later, I probably wouldn't have even been on that one. I would have been on the newer one that I'm on now. Um, but I got about seven months out of that and then um, they were going to move me on to this new one that I'm on now, which is called Inher2, which has been in the news a lot because it's a new drug and it's meant to be really good. Um, it can kind of target lots of different type of cancers and um, it's got really positive reviews. So I'm hoping that that is going, going to do well for me. Um, but my oncologist there was retiring, so they were moving me over to a different hospital it's a cancer centre that I go to and um, I've got a new oncologist um, and he sort of said, oh, you know, when did you have your last brain MRI? And I said, oh, I haven't had a brain MRI. I've not had any um, any side effects or anything. So I've only had CT scans. And he said, oh, that doesn't really show much up in the brain. So we'll send you just for a routine MRI on your brain for like a baseline so that we can see... Um, you know, in the future, if anything kind of crops up, we've got like a baseline. So I didn't think too much of it at the time. And um, toddled off, had my brain MRI. Um, and then um, a couple of weeks later, when I went for my appointment at the hospital, I um, got told the news that they had found three small lesions in my brain, um, two at the front and one on the left side. Um, and I would need treatment on those. So the treatment I'm going to have is at the Royal Marsden. And I mean, you can't you can't be in safer hands really than there. They are like the leading cancer hospital. They do a lot of research. They're really amazing over there. So I'm really grateful that I'm going to get referred there and have the treatment there. Um, so I went there last week um, and had a brain MRI. They do it in a higher resolution just to make sure there's no tiny, they call them micromets, like hiding anywhere that wasn't picked up on the other one. And they fit like a plastic sort of like mask for your face to have while they're doing the radiation. It's not painful or anything. It's like soft rubber when they put it on and then it hardens up after. Um, and they're confident that they will be able to do it in just one session, which is good. So I'll go for one session um and have the three areas radiated um and then um what are you crying for juki he's crying come here you want to say hello you want to say hello juki's here um so yeah i'm gonna go and have that done in one session and hopefully they'll get all of those and then this new chemo i'm on does actually get to the brain so the hope is that once they've blasted them it will um it the the chemo will either continue to shrink them or will keep them stable is the hope but i did kind of ask the question if they come back is this like a one-time only and they did assure me that 
if they come back in new areas that I could have the cyber knife repeated, which is positive. Um, and then they're going to do three monthly scans just to keep a, an eye on it. So um, the main annoyance of it all, apart from obviously having to have radiation to your brain, is that I can't drive, unfortunately, for at least a year. Um, they do say that the cyber knife can cause some long term side effects. It can be like seizures and strokes, things like that, which are very rare. But obviously to err on the side of caution, they um, want to monitor you for a year without you driving. Because obviously if you have a crash, you'll either end up killing yourself or someone else. So I get that it's a safety point of view, but obviously um, it does make life very difficult because... Um, it's always been that my husband goes to work full time and he either travels or he works in London at the moment. And I kind of work part time and like ferry the kids around to all the various clubs and birthday parties and, you know, everything else they go to, swimming lessons and whatnot. And um, obviously, like your independence of just like popping to do the food shopping if you go somewhere that doesn't deliver or like taking the kids to the library or the, you know, home bargains or wherever or it's just going to be really, really strange um, to not be able to drive. But I've got a disabled person's rail card. I've applied for a free bus pass. Um, I'm going to have to get walking a bit more. The school isn't driving distance, so I'm going to have to get walking, I think. Um, sorry, the school isn't walk walkable, really. We normally drive. Um, I mean, I say it's not walkable. It's like 1.8 miles. So for a lot of people, that's very walkable. Maybe I'm just lazy. But obviously, if you're not feeling the best, that's quite a long way to walk. So we're going to try and juggle it, I think, where my husband does some some lifts and I do some walking and whatever. But um, yeah, it's not the best news, but um, I had a break from YouTube for a week or so just to get my head around things. I was just feeling a bit miserable and wasn't really in the right frame of mind to kind of come on and be chirpy without kind of saying what was going on and, and whatnot so i took a week so thank you all for your comments i really appreciate it all sending like your love and your well wishes and whatever and saying to take care um so but yeah i, I enjoy doing it so you know i'm going to carry on doing it but obviously there might be some rather lazy dinners someday if i'm not feeling great or i might you know miss the odd video or whatever but um yeah that's kind of the update so you know, just really to say without like banging on, obviously, if you've got anything that you've been ignoring, like go and get it checked. If you get fobbed off and you don't think that it is, any, you know, you think it's something to worry about, you know, ask for a second opinion or say that you want to be referred or whatever. Obviously, go for your mammograms, check your boobs and, you know, everything else. Because I always wonder now if I hadn't have ignored it for a few months or whether they'd sent me straight away when I very first went to the GP you know maybe I wouldn't be in the situation of it being incurable and having to live on treatment for as long as it lasts um however long that may be fingers crossed a very long time I'm hoping that the you know I can outrun the tiger and the um, research is getting better and better so but yeah self-advocate if there's anything you're worried about and um if anyone is going through um well anything really cancer or secondary cancer or whatever and or i've mentioned any chemos or anything that you're going to be on or whatever feel free obviously to comment or leave me a message or i'm on instagram um donna underscore and underscore duke underscore cook i'll try and leave it linked below um if you want to like follow me on there and um and dm me or whatever you know I'm happy to kind of answer any questions if there's anything you're worried about or or whatever. I'm, I mean, I'm by no means an oncologist, but I've had quite a few procedures and chemos and scans and, and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, that's the kind of the, the deal. Um, not the best news, but we soldier on. And um, I know we obviously you'll all be worrying. The kids are fine. We've kind of explained it to them as well and um, said, you know, that there's treatment options and stuff available. We've not like, they're not worried or scared or they're quite used to, um, it's a bit of a shame to say they're quite used to it, but they are. And um, 
I think as long as I'm feeling well, which I am, um, and the treatment works, then they'll be fine. So they're carrying on as normal with school and clubs and whatever else. And I'm still at work at the moment. My work are absolutely brilliant at letting me have time for like appointments and if I'm not well and stuff. So um, I'm still there at the moment and um, I'm sure there will soon become a new norm, as they say. And um, you never know, I might shed a few pounds, all that chocolate I keep eating in the evening. You've probably seen on my grocery hauls. But yeah, um, thank you if you've got to the end and you've seen me, ram heard me rambling on, you know, for this long. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, normal service will resume. I've got a pound shop order coming up for you as well in the next few days. And obviously my meals of the weeks and grocery shops and whatever. I probably won't be getting over to Aldi and Lidl at the moment because they don't deliver. It will probably will be like the places that I can get delivered at the moment um, because I don't want to add too many lifts onto my poor husband. He's already um, taking me for my medical appointments and stuff and working and everything else. So I'll take the load off a little bit and get things delivered at the moment. So, um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. And again, thank you for all your comments. And um, if you haven't already subscribed, hit the button guys. I'd love to have you around. Um, I'm heading up towards 2000 subscribers, which would be good. You never know if I make so much money on YouTube, I might be able to give up work. That's, that would be good, fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Say bye, Juki.